Hi, my name is Maggie Blumenthal, and I'm a Food Corps service member serving in RSU 12 with Mike Flynn, the School Nutrition Director. Hello, we're going to make a crunchy baked fish with a local pollock. I'm going to be careful to touch the fish with my right hand. I'm a left-handed knife user. Uh, we have something called the nape that we're going to remove. So now I'm going to observe these two fillets are different sizes. My goal is to create a, a three ounce portion that while I'm cutting the fish, Maggie will assemble the breading and the moisture. So with this thicker fillet, I'm going to cut more of it at an angle. And the reason is, I, again, I want it to bread and coat evenly throughout the fillet. For each piece, you're gonna wanna feel the whole piece and make sure there's no bone. So now we have the breadcrumb ready. Uh, Maggie's gonna put it into two separate bowls because in our production for two-stage breading, we're gonna keep half of the crumb reserved so that we can contaminate, saturate the first half. It'll also help us with a better yield, a better even breading. So now we're gonna do the two-stage breading. This is my damp hand, my wet hand, and I'm trying to keep a dry hand, but I'm gonna let Maggie do the dry packing. And with our school lunch program, we use parchment paper under the fish, and that'll help with the cleaning later. I'm gonna try to continue to stir in the seasoning so that they don't settle to the bottom, so they coat the fish. I'm gonna let it drip. So for packing purposes, Maggie's going to grab a handful of the crumb, put it on the fish, and pack at the same time. A little bit of pressure. And then she's going to shake the piece. She's going to try not to touch the filet oil and keep her hands dry at all times. If you're doing lunch for 100 or so, 200, you could set these up. You could freeze them. Um, that way when you look and you see 10 trays, you know you have 300 portions. Notice how Maggie has the filet skin side down. So be aware that restaurants, high-end cooking, will always want the skin side down on fish. And we'll bake this at 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes till it reaches 145 degrees. And that'll be it. So we're gonna be making two aiolis today. This one will be our lemon parsley. So you're gonna to wanna to lay the knife flat on these cloves, pressing down with the palm of your hand to get all of those shells off. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna mix up the bulk of our aioli base, which would be mayonnaise. I'm gonna be adding lemon juice to add a little acidity. And for our oil component, we are going to be using a fresh local ingredient, which is sunflower oil made right here in Maine. So right here we have a tablespoon of chopped garlic. And this creates really small pieces so that it kind of expands the flavor over the whole aioli dish. And now Chef Mike is taking off the parsley leaves, which he's going to then cut up in really small pieces. Right there, thank you. All right, so this will add a really nice color to this sauce. So we've had the parsley and we have the lemon and all we need to do is add a little bit of salt. So now we're done with our mother sauce, which is the or mother or base sauce for this. And we're gonna separate it into thirds into each of these containers. Now that we've sectioned our base aioli into three different bowls, we're gonna leave this one to the side because this is all complete. And we're gonna start working on our next aioli, which is a sriracha based for our sriracha aioli, I'm gonna use half of a teaspoon because it can be really spicy. All right, and that one is done for that sriracha aioli. I'm testing for 145 degrees. I'm gonna to go to the thickest piece that I have and push the probe in. And it looks like I'm climbing to 140, 155 right there. And that's the crunchy baked fish recipe with the pollock. 